My day started for September 11th, actually, on September 10th. I go into work that night, start at 11.30. 8 o'clock in the morning rolls around uh, the end of our shift. I uh, leave the building to uh, head back home. It was the first day that my two boys were going to be in school full time, and actually, I could get some sleep. So I'm on the train going home, and uh, I was listening to a radio show. And they were talking about a plane that had hit the Trade Center. This just into our newsroom, a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Standing on the top of my roof, and I'm looking at the World Trade Center, and there's a huge hole in it. You can hear from the fire trucks that there's a lot of uh, fire personnel and police personnel over there. Went home, turned on the TV, and then we saw the second plane hit. And then I knew right away I, I had to get back to work. I absolutely knew we were under attack. And it was going to be us to defend the city. You know, we were just doing our job. And uh, to this day, it's, it still haunts me. I joined the emergency service unit in 1987. The emergency service unit is the unit that does everything that the actual foot cop can't do. The old saying is, if people need help, they call the police. When the police need help, they call the emergency service unit. Most people across the country would know that as SWAT, except it's also a high-risk rescue unit. We do everything from pull people out that got run over by subway cars, pull people off bridges and buildings. We're it. You know, we, we don't leave until the job is done, no matter where it is, what it is. On 9-11, I was already retired six years, and uh, my wife is just happy to have me retired. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to work. My people are in there. She's like, you're retired. No, I'm not. <laughs> My people are in there. So uh, I left her crying at the door. I ran up to my lock. I said, I'm going to grab my stuff, jump in the back of the truck, the big ESU truck. I'm going to grab everything off my locker except pants. So I had a shirt, I had shorts on, which were jorts, once I hear it coming back in style. I tell the sergeant, I don't have my pants. He said, ah, don't worry about it. You're not going to need them. Now, at the time, we didn't realize what type of plane this was until we got down there, and then things changed. I was the senior person on the scene for my squad at that time when we arrived, and I didn't have pants on, so I became the truck one chauffeur. I'm going to put teams in, one team in the North Tower, one team in the South Tower. Everybody's going to respond to me. I was the mobilization point for ESU. If I'm wearing my full uniform that day, you know, like I should have, I should have had with me, then maybe I'm not the truck one chauffeur, and maybe I'm one of the teams that goes to the South Tower. I think that if somebody came up to us and said, I built this building and it's gonna fall, and I transmitted that to the guys in the building, they would have just moved faster. Every single one of those guys would not have did done anything different. It's down. It's down. It's down. It's down. It's down. We arrived on the scene just as the second tower had finished collapsing, and uh, the guys and girls coming from 
the Trade Center were just covered in dust, bleeding, hurt, limping, carrying each other. With all that massive debris field, there was not one thing that was discernible as an office. So I remember thinking if hardened furniture didn't have a chance to survive, what chance did a, did a person have? I get to this guy who's waving his flashlight, and I, I just come over to him. I look in this hole, it's about the size of a manhole. And he says, there's two cops in this hole. I can hear him, but I can't see him. So Patty McGee comes in behind me. And I remember the fire department would say, you got to get out of there. You got to get out of there. The other buildings are coming down. You know, you, you, it's too dangerous. And, and Scott and I made a conscious decision that, yeah, it's too dangerous, but we're not leaving these two cops here. We're just, it's not happening. You to Marie? Yeah. Scott Strauss, emergency <laughs> service unit. The move to the World Trade Center is probably one of the few times that uh, Hollywood made something less intense than it was. We were squeezing through areas that were so tight. Uh, you just had to pull yourself through. Uh, they, the, the, some of the I-beams were burning hot, and you, you had to get by as quick as you can. You had to twist around another one and up around. And, and there was no room for us to turn around to even get out if we had to. We would just crawl and crawl deeper in there. And um, I said to myself, uh, I asked my kids to be good. Uh, I asked him to take care of mom. Make me proud. And I apologized for getting myself killed. I said that all of myself down as I was crawling out to this hole because I didn't think we were getting out of there. Uh, you get down to the bottom on this 20 foot angle and uh, you could see Will. And he was in this tiny little opening about 20 feet away from us. And I'm just clawing away with my bare hands at, um, at, at the rubble that's around Will. And um, he's talking to me, and uh, he's in bad shape. He keeps talking about his partner. You got to get to my partner. You got to get to my partner. And the buildings four and five are starting to collapse on top of them and on top of us. And uh, they're yelling down to us, get out of there, guys. Get out. You got to get out. We got to get out of here. The, bu the buildings are coming down. We can't control the fires. So uh, Will looks at me, and he says, uh, you're not leaving me, are you? I said, no, we're not leaving. I wanted to go, but there's no way I could leave him to die. So um, we stayed. They were the only two people that we pulled out. Scott Strauss, myself, we were awarded the police department's Medal of Honor. Now, I personally don't think I deserved it. I, I just did my job, you know. Unfortunately, we lost 14 in the emergency service unit and, and another nine in the police department and the fire department had lost 343. It, it, it was a big loss for us and, and still 20 years I've never missed being down at the World Trade Center on 9-11. I'm gonna have to help my people. The retirees that I know, 99% of them responded to the scene to see if they could help. And I think it's a general consensus. While a retiree has no obligation, they have a duty. It's in their lifeblood to help people. When everybody's running out, we're running in. And if an event like that happened again, we're gonna respond the same way. You know, we're, we're gonna put our lives in jeopardy to save your life. The next day, it was all rescue. It was a teamwork effort. Fire Department, Police Department, Emergency Service Unit, you know, not one person did everything. September 11th, I was a recruit with the NYPD training to become a police officer. We were working long hours, but those guys that were down there were working like in and out, no breaks. Like they were, they'll come out, have a drink of water, go back out there. 
I slept on a cot that night on the West Side Highway. Woke up the next morning, and you know, I did that for another two days, going over the pile, going over the pile. That first week was just one long day, you know, until a week later, I heard on the radio, it's been a, it's been a week since the, the, the World Trade Center day, you know, on the 9-11. I'm like, wow, it's been a week? Just one day morphed into the next. And there was a time where we're all so tired and we're on our way, and I don't know what day it was, but we're on our way back down to the pile and we're in a police van and um, people are applauding us as we get closer to ground zero. People are lined the streets with signs, thank you, and you're our heroes. And we were uh, like, ah, what are we, in a fire truck? You know, because every, everybody loves a fireman, nobody likes a cop. It was like you were almost like a movie star. The amount of love we got from the public was incredible, incredible. For the days and weeks after, no matter where we were, people were thanking us. And it was great to see the, the patriotism from everyone in New York. I think September 12th uh, brought us together because we needed each other's help. Without each other's support, I don't think we would have pulled through. We had so many New Yorkers come in, what can we do, what can we do? I'll never forget this. So many people stepped up, really. The entire country, everybody came together. We were one nation. It wasn't just the firefighters. It wasn't just the police officers. There were civilians in that building helping civilians get down those stairs. People just doing what they had to do, doing what was right. Nobody cared about anything else other than helping the guy next to you.